Hi guys, it's Kelly Lenable here and I am back with another video for W Plus 9. Today I'm going to be using a um, some newer stuff, some older stuff. Uh, so first thing we're going to be using is this new Little Dreamers, uh, the stamp set and the dies, the Stardust um, stamp set, one of the gift cards layers um, from the gift cards layers die, <laughs> and this diagonal stripe stencil. So I don't in my head, I pictured like a soft pastel -y rainbow situation, but I don't have any pattern paper. I like literally don't own any of it. I had gobs of it that I had hoarded and um, I just don't have any of it anymore. I had, it had to go. So what I'm going to do with the stencil is I pick some Distress Oxide inks and I'm going to kind of create my own rainbow stripe paper. So I have this um, post-it masking tape that you see here and I'm going to be using that to mask either side now so I could show you a couple of the colors um, I started doing it just every other color uh, but in reality what I did was I stuck with one color and I counted the spaces in between so I started with the pink there were five spaces for the violet the broken china the cracked pistachio the what's the other one um fossilized amber and the spiced marmalade so then i counted five spaces and then i did another pink one one of the problems that i've had in the past um doing this with regular distress inks and i'll tell you that it does the same thing uh, with distress oxides is when you're using the same mask over and over again it picks up the pigment from the mask so you don't have a true color unless you kind of change them up which i definitely did especially for the yellows because the fossilized amber is a really strong pigment so I had all of them done I went back to the first one here because I just didn't feel like the intensity uh, matched um, but yeah so that's pretty much it I'm gonna remove the stencil and then BAM rainbow paper and I love it <laughs> um, I love the way that it came out so I ended up trimming this down to be slightly smaller than my card front um, and then I set that aside. I have stamped all of my images out. I'm going to cut them out with the dies. So I needed to give myself enough space. Um, but I stamped all of them out. I'm using uh, W plus 9 white cardstock. And then we're just going to do some Copa coloring. Uh, a lot of this is really simple. Um, for the moon, I just picked out some yellows. And then you'll have to pardon me. I was kind of off the screen. So I filled it in with the lightest color. I went back in and did some shading with the mid-tone from the left toward the right. And then I just added a line of the darkest color. I'm going to use um, the lightest color just to make sure I have a good blend. And then I'm going to use all of those same colors for the star as well. But I'm going to bring in just... A slightly darker one. I wanted that spice marmalade to be a little bit more represented in the card than it was, so I thought that adding the orange to the stars would be a good way to do that. So I'm using that Y13 to just outline my star. My darkest parts are going to be on the outer edges. And then from kind of where the, the points meet in, I'm just doing um, some flicks just along that outline that I've created. I'm gonna bring in that Y38 to kind of represent a little bit of that orange and I'm doing the same thing there. Um, just flicking it just to give it some sort of shading. I don't think there is a right or a wrong way to shade anything really, but especially stars. Um, I just thought that it would be um, cute to have the darker portions on the outside and then the lighter portions on the inside. So I did that, I colored the next star, and then we're going to start moving on to the little characters. So I think that these are totally adorable, and I love them so, so, so much. Um, but I love them even more in unconventional colors. So that's kind of... Um, I already knew in my head before I even created my rainbow paper that I was going to color them in soft pastel unconventional covers. Not that browns or grays or what have you wouldn't be cute, but I really like them in um, mint greens and uh, Tiffany blues and light pinks. Um, so here basically I'm just adding uh, the mid-tone to the areas that are going to be the darkest and then the darkest color I'm really being very light-handed with because I do want them to be more pastel. I'm adding that to where his arms are folded in the back, where they're folded up underneath his chin, um, where the, his legs stick out from the cloud, and then just behind his snout a little bit I added um, just to give it some sort of dimension. And then just going to blend in all those areas finally out to the lightest color 
and I did not go over um, his snout a second time. I left that the original one layer of the BG11. I felt like I lost a little bit of shading when I blended them out, so I just went back in with the darkest color and just added little bits of that. For the cloud, I'm going to go in with the uh, cool grays. And this is just, again, to give it just a little bit of a dimension. So where he's hanging over it, he would obviously cast a shadow. But then I'm just going to do little half circles or um, curly cues it within the cloud itself so that it has some sort of texture. After I did this, um, the C3, then I blended it out with the C1, but it just felt kind of very I don't know, flat to me. I didn't like just the gray. So I'm going to come back and fix that later. For this cute little bunny uh, with the bow in her um, hair, I decided to do some pinks. I also used the, well, they're actually ours, but they do look pink. Um, I used the lightest color just to add some shading to my little bear's ears, and I'll do the same thing with the monkey uh, eventually. But then here, the way his ear is bent over, it would be darkest where it's bent. It would be darkest where the bow is hanging over. Um, there would be shading because I always color as if my light source was in the top right-hand corner. So there would be shading um, where his arm is overcasting his belly, where his foot is overcasting his belly. Um, this R43 marker, I don't know why I don't use this more often because what a pretty color. And I just, not, I think this is probably the first time I've ever used it in a video. Um, so just adding in uh, those shades and then again blending out with the mid-tone. For these, because I am making them more pastel, I really used only used a three-color blend. And um, I, I kind of like the way they came out, even though it's not my usual um, super bold coloring. I decided that I was going to make her bow green. There's going to be lots of blue represented in the card, uh, which will match the monkey. So I thought there should be something else that would be a little bit of green on here. And then I just did um, the mid-tone and the darkest color for her bow. Here for these blues, this is where we're going to go back in and um, fix that cloud a little bit. I'm going to use that B21 to just kind of go over the squiggles that I've already created and just give it a little bit more color. And I liked that so much better, even though it's just like five little lines of blue. I'm going to fill in my monkey with my lightest color. Um, these, I mean, they're just darling. They're, they're such just such charming cute little images i just totally love them so for him he's going to have shading typically the lighter um, part of their face is the center so i'm adding some shading around that and then again underneath his chin on the right hand side of his um body and then around his tail the tip of his tail where it's curved i left that part the lightest and then again underneath the chin um and then inside of his, his legs where um typically that's where it is darker and then just working back out to that lightest color i'm filling in a little bit more with my mid-tone than i had originally um just because I, I guess i felt like that matched the blue better that i had on the rainbow stripe paper it wasn't quite as light and then Another thing that I'm going to do, so a lot of my cars are usually um, one layer. They're very clean and simple. This is probably a, a very busy card for me. I still think it came out adorable. It's just not my typical style. I thought that they would be really, really cute with some white pen detail. So I made them all polka dotted. You can do stripes. You can do checkers. You can basically do any design that you want to do. But because I already had stripes in the background, I thought that just some very tiny little polka dots would be cute and would not be overwhelming um, and wouldn't make the card appear to be any more busy. I always outline all of my images. I feel like a bold black line just makes those colors pop. Um, and I do not typically get to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of two images that one has been outlined and one has been not, and they are the exact same thing. So here you can see the star in the middle is outlined. The one on the left is not. Total difference. That's why it's worth it to me. Um, and if you're going to be using die cuts, then you definitely want to do all of your outlining and detail work before you cut them out so you don't have to chase them all over your desk. So I'm going to put my dies in place, hold them in place with some washi tape. You can see those other clouds in the background. I colored them the same way that I did that the one the bear is using. Ran all of those through my Big Shot as well as the gift cards layers die. 
So now I have my sentiment in uh, my Mini Misty and I'm using the W plus nine pure black ink to go ahead and stamp down my sentiment. I'll be honest, I originally tried the um, silver lining and because I thought, oh, you know, they're pastels, it'll be softer and I just couldn't do it. I just, <laughs> I just love the black guys, I just do. Um, so here I have a white card base. I'm going to go ahead and adhere my rainbow paper. Like I said, I trimmed that down. And then I'm going to use some craft fun foam to pop up that middle sediment and put that down um, so that it's right in the center of my card. And then that way I can start kind of placing my elements around that. But the, the sentiment really is going to be my focal point where the images are really going to be the accent. So once I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and push it down. I know people use dry adhesive for the foam. I use wet adhesive. I've never had any issues with it. So you just use whatever works for you. And then I'm going to start kind of, th these don't have any adhesive on it or anything. I'm just going to lay them out so I can see where I want the um, pieces parts to go. Once I have laid them all out and I have a good idea of what I'm doing, then I will start adhering them. I decided that I was going to go for kind of a multi-layered look. I, it made more sense to me to have some of the clouds um, glued flat to the card base and then others popped up over them. I could have probably popped them all up, but I just thought that it looked more interesting, I guess, with some of them flat and some of them raised up. So um, you'll see me just kind of trying to get my placement right. Now I did adhere the that cloud over on the top left hand side, but you'll see later that I ended up changing it. Uh, I just didn't love the way that it was looking. Some of these pieces have um, foam, just foam. Some of them have just uh, the liquid adhesive. Some of them have a combination of both. If it overlaps the um, sentiment, the placement, the place, place card, place card, die cut piece. There we go. If it overhangs the die cut piece um, enough that I would need to adhere it as well as put the foam tape on it, I did that. If I could get away with just gluing it flat to the die cut piece or just gluing it flat to um, the card base, I did that. Now here you'll see that I moved this um, cloud. With the bunny and the three clouds in the bottom right hand corner, it just looked really off balance. And so it, I needed to move those clouds up to kind of balance my card design because it was feeling very heavy on the right hand side. So I did pull it up from behind the moon. Thankfully, nothing tore. It ended up working out just fine. And then the middle kind of felt a little lonely and it, like it needed something. So I pulled out the Wild Mango and Hayride and the Little Dreamer set has these little stars that are in it. So I chose the solid stars and then I'm just stamping them to kind of fill in that space. Again, nothing that's overpowering, just a little bit of an accent to fill in that um, area. I used my clear wink of Stella to go over the moon and the two stars and then I also added it to the little stars that I had stamped and then that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you are inspired to create something and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.